Hello everybody, my name is Troublemaker. Today we're showing off some TBZ. And, uh, very specific one. And I get this build, um, probably, say if I do 100 TBZs in a day, I usually do about, say, 50 TBZs in a day. But say I do 100, about 65 of them will be this style play. And what it is, it's low econ, high aggression. Zerg style. It's decently hard to spot and when you do spot it you don't even know what you're really seeing a lot of the time so uh, you know I started doing this against Zergs I do a uh, 15 cc opening uh, because they can't really do any aggression against me because they're doing a 15 hatch unless they do a 15 pool in that case I'm in a little bit of trouble I'm going to lose some SCVs to this but uh, against the standard Zerg it goes 15 hatch this is a pretty safe way of opening I uh, wall up with one racks, one depot, one racks, and um, you know, for any kind of heavy aggression, there's decent uh, bunker spots you can place. You can place one right here, here, put one in the corner here, you put one in your mineral pool, even, so there's tons. Uh, but I'm going to put up a forward and attempt to wall this off. I mean, he's not looking heavily aggressive yet, but we will see. And he's getting down Evo Chamber with a spine pool. He has no gas yet. This is like a weird part of his build. He probably should delay this a little bit, but a uh, heavy amount of queens. And that's pretty common. You usually get about four queens as Zerg these days. And then you just drone. Heavy, 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 heavy droning. You want to get about, say, 50 drones before you start this. And uh, once you get that 50 drone marker, the madness begins. So I like to attack with uh, my first few group of marines, just to clear off some lings, maybe catch some overlords, I'm lucky. I think I missed this one, actually. Oh, dogs, wish they'd shut up. Alright, so, yeah, this is something that I saw uh, Maru Prime do, and it was kind of neat, you know, if, you, if I was to get this overlord, i just miss it, and like, he is so smart. I thought I was going this way, so that he can, you know, crop it, like, somewhere over here, but it's actually going south. He just micros it away. And this is a Masters level player, by the way. So, uh, you know, he's starting to make some lings. He's at about 27 uh, drones. I don't know if he's going to be droning again behind this, but we'll see. Looks, yeah, it looks like he is. These are just defensive drones to, to fend off any uh, big pushes. And uh, so what we saw is that he hasn't taken his third. That uh, kind of sends some signals off. If he doesn't take his third, it means he's probably getting gases. And seeing as I did a 15 CC, you'll probably want to attack me. Because otherwise he'll get behind. Like, just massively behind, you know. And by massively, I mean like, one SCB with mules, which is pretty far behind. God, those ducks are loud. Uh, right now I have more gas in him, but that'll change soon. I'm laying down a few more Raxes and a command center. We're going to do a third expansion. And uh, we're going to have lots of Raxes. You ha to beat this, you kind of have to lay down this other command center. Because, um, basically, he'll just continue pounding you and just sliding you a few drones here and there and getting ahead. So you have to be able to like lay down a command center and secure it. So we're going to speed ahead. Uh, let's see. What, what drone number does he stop on before he does his high econ aggression? I think he should be around 50. 50 is usually where you want to go. And looks like yeah, he's got a second Evo Chamber, and this is also a big part of this. You get double Evo Chamber, and you start on double upgrades. You get a very delayed Bane list. He's actually got three Evo Chambers. He actually forgot he built this one, because it was early. I, I knew it was early, and a lot of people do this. They actually accidentally build, like, extras. And so, yeah, his aggression starts at around 50, and he's going to get this third hatch. This is basically for macro, as in, like, building lots of lings and uh, Bane links, and not for... Droning. He'll drone that later, but for now it's just for lings and bangs. So he's getting plus one armor, plus one damage. Big part of this. He's got his layer tech. He's going to get the rolly upgrade eventually. Uh, he's getting an infestation pit. I don't know about this yet. This is really late or early infestation pits for this build. Usually the infestation pit you get for 3-3 um, three, three upgrades and you just continue with this ling bane aggression. And it's actually pretty brutal. So right now this is not a defensible position. Lay down some mules, and here comes the big aggression. Loigan. Well, actually, I got the, he's got 41 drones. Oops. I got the 50. 
But here's how you defend it. And just take a quick look. I have a bunker here behind this. And this is if he was just run on by. He I'd snipe some extras. A lot of people like to do, they just run on through all this. Decent distance apart. You don't want beam links hitting multiple. And um, you know, eventually you'll just bunker here and bunker here, maybe even bunker like right here. And that's kind of how you just beat this. Just lots of bunkers. The second you scout, you don't scout a third right here. You start gotta start thinking like, uh, he's up to something. He's up to something. Here it comes. The up to something has come. I try to wall this off because I'm thinking like, well, you know, if I get this wall off, that's huge with an extra bunker. Lift off the command center. I'm getting a lot of banes. That's awesome. Microing back, killing a lot more banes. Really cost efficient trading. He doesn't have any banes now. So now it's just one one links, which are still, you know, no laughing matter. They're still pretty good. And, uh, you know, disaster averted. Bunkers save the day. I do them new. Get out C-Chang. Get out double factory. So you should have four gas by this point. And lay down your command center again and get more gas. Because you're not you're getting two factory with tanks. You're getting lots of marines with upgrades. Make sure to get the combat shields. And uh, you're getting the one-on-one -one upgrades. And you're gonna and eventually you know lay down an armory, lay down an engineering bay, get even further ahead on those upgrades. And you know, he's gonna drone again. He was at the right number. Fifty is the key number. Once you get fifty drones, you just go relentless. He's pushing his creep, smart player, getting lots of drones, getting lots of lings. I look at the production, like 50, like, is just such a magical number. Because once you get 50, you can do a lot of stuff. And he's got a lot of queens, too. He's got, let's see, he's at four, five, six, seven queens. So this guy's going to have crazy creep spread. And, like, being able to defeat most early pushes. So we got a bunker here. It's not filled yet. Lots of idle STVs, oh no. And he's going for 2-2, two, two, which is good, because I'm... Basically, I'm going to start my 2-2 as well. And there comes the Banelings and the Lings. The goal of these attacks is to uh, just stop this from mining, kill off all these SCVs. Stop this from mining, kill off all these SCVs. If he can kill off all these SCVs, that's huge for him. And I'm pretty sure he does, yeah. And here's a nice little funnel I created using buildings. Got siege tanks coming in, uh, and it's not going to be very cost effective for him at all. Um, you know... Actually, he's trading pretty cost-effectively now I look at it. It's because all these SCB kills actually is like what's getting in here. And, you know, like it's actually pretty decent. He got me back down to 49, so we're back down equal number of hard stars. And what's he doing behind this? 42 lings. Non-stop aggression. 50 is such a great number. But we have lots of siege tanks. Siege tanks basically shut this down. And the reason why this works against most players is because um, siege tanks are not that common when you see this kind of marine heavy build stuff. Usually people are more likely to get medivacs. And even at pro level, like this is kind of the case. They're heavy, heavy marine. You don't see a lot of two factory tanks. And this kind of shuts us down. Um, if you want to see someone who does like insanely good low econ aggression, um, Lenok Foyu is insanely, he just kills with it. Uh, but unfortunately, he does it too much. And people kind of just figured out his style, and he's not doing so hot. But, you know, it's it's actually just really good. So, uh, we're laying down our fourth, because we want to stay ahead. And we're laying right here. And once you get the fourth, that's basically like your signal to push out. I get one Thor, because uh, this build has this tendency of, of tech switching. It's like, you see huge maps of upgraded Lings and Banelings, and then out of nowhere you see Broodlord show up, just because... Like, income gets out of control pretty fast. I mean, was it two minutes ago? He was at like 50 harvesters, now he's at the 62. And he's got an army. So this guy is dangerous. And he's going into the Intifester tech. Um, you know, which is not going to work, of course. Not going to work against this number of siege tanks. What he actually needs is Mutalisks. And that's why I got the Thor. If he had, if he had Mutalisks, he would have had a chance, but he didn't. So I'm just scouting the southern base, see if he's taking his fourth. Uh, he's got drones going down to take it right now, which is kind of funny timing. And uh, you know, he's got a lot of banes coming down, but not really enough to deal with this uh, ball. Oh no, don't use your banes on the siege tanks. You know, it's like how my uh, siege tanks are kind of like spinning around like that. It's because um, I'm actually using them to target specific banelings. And if you target specifically banelings, you're pretty set. 
So he does, in fact, get this expansion down. And he's getting this one at the top. And this is, like, once again, pretty, like, Zerg Tactics 101. I got this base here, and I got this base here. They're so far apart, you can't attack both. And that's the truth. You have to attack one or the other. Unless you split up your units. In that case, you just pick both of them apart. And, like, splitting units is something that just barely works against Zerg. So we're going to lay down our expansion, and we're going to defend it. We're going to take our big Thor Ball, which is not exactly the most useful you know, composition right now, to deal with this very small army. This is, act like, it looks a little bigger than it is. And you got one fungal. That is nice. He might get all these, I think he does get all these SCVs. But I, I'm actually just massively ahead right now, just, you know, and then these SCVs die, and suddenly, uh, I'm still ahead in the game, I'm just less SCVs. Just because my army composition is so friggin' huge. Thor's course uh, cannot be fungal. So, uh, poor infestors won't like to be doing some hot here. And uh, Thor's are also really good at soaking damage. I got the armor upgrade specifically for that. Uh, I want them taking damage. He's lost all of his festers. Oh no. This is not looking good. And, uh, you know, just speeding along here. Just turn it to a normal game. Um, I'm keeping these bunkers up. They're not worth salvaging. My minerals are quite high. Keeping that bunker up. Not worth salvaging. They're, not, they're just, they're good as is. I, I don't need this many siege tanks here. I think eventually I'll actually, yeah, on siege that many tanks. I only need like one siege tank here. But you do want to keep your corners covered. One bunker, one siege tank will hold off quite a bit and will trade quite cost effectively. And now we're just going to do the standard kind of Terran thing. We run in with a blob of units. Um, you know, we know infestors on the map, so we're going to spread our units pretty effectively. Just smaller blobs than usual. Keep our tanks red relatively in the middle so that uh, they can't get flanked by anything like Mutalisk or um, Mass Zergling. And just spread our marines out a little bit so that if infestors are on the map, which they are in fact not on the map, Right now? Are they infestors? No, there's no infestors. It's actually entirely like Ultra Ling, which is becoming more and more popular. He's got the 2-2 two, two upgrades to my 2-2 my two, two upgrades. Oh, I got 3-3 three, three on the way. That's why. And I got plus 2 armor for my tanks. I'm going to crush this through all of my Thors. And uh, now he only, not only has his Queens. And, you know, Transfuse are good, but he doesn't have the upgrades for that. And I, I push back. I want... I want to reinforce. I do have another blob of units coming in. Another blob here. Uh, Metavax are good. I could probably use a few command centers right now. Uh, not command centers. You know, like, all command centers and barracks. Like, two command centers and a barracks. One command center goes here. One stays as, like, a macro mule drop. And then I just cut down my SCVs. Uh, right now, I'm at about where I want to be. Uh, if I did the extra command center trick, I'd throw away, like, five or six SCVs and I just have a big, big army. Um, so this is going to be very tragic. I have siege tanks here, which I will move up, and lots of bane lanes. So I, my thoughts like, F this, I'm just going to, like, lift off, and actually I don't lose a, a lot there. And he's like, oh, I'm just going to throw all these bane links into these siege tanks. Oh, no. I don't know if he even realizes that I left off. It's the sad part. This is a master's level player. So one command down the way. Bane link counterattack. How many bane links does it take to kill a fortress? Well... Um, however many that was, plus one. We'll do it. And that's game. Uh, yeah. So, just kind of go over this real quick. For scouting purposes, um, when you open Command Center first, this style of aggression is very, very common. Uh, every time I open like this, almost every time, like I'd say, yes, it was 75% of the time that I open like this, I get this result. The reason why I do Command Center first is because it has a lot of opening options. Uh, I could do uh, fast Hellions, I could do lots of racks, and, uh, you know, this key scouting information here tells me it doesn't take the fast third, and that's either going to be like Mutalisks or some kind of heavy aggression. When you scan the base, look for Evo Chambers and Bane Lane Nest, and you see that power combination, you know this is coming. It might not be coming just this second. And probably isn't, but you'll have time to prepare for it. So lots of bunkers. Make sure the bunkers are spread apart. And make sure, um, you know, you cover as little service area as possible. This bunker right here might have been better right here, where it's just slightly less service area. I don't know, probably. This bunker here could alternately have been up here, when this one up here, you know. It just have good bunker placements, and you can defend off this mighty push. Uh, make sure you take your third. You don't want to fall behind. The idea of this attack is not to kill you. It's to kill off your economy and just whittle you down. Slowly, slowly, slowly. 
So, you know, don't trade SCBs for Lings. Don't do that. Um, but do take your third. You'll need that. And, you know, the rest of the game's nine minutes long. It's going to be a lot of Ling Bane aggression. You can see it coming in here, wiping it a little bit. Create chokes. Creating chokes is a good idea. Uh, I wouldn't do it necessarily like this, but um, have something. You know, at this point, the units lost are about even, so don't think you're so massively ahead just because you're killing off a bunch of lanes. This is not the design of the build. The build is designed to hit your economy, and it works quite well. And you can see, like, you know, at this point, he's pretty free to drone. He has all the tech he needs because he has this infestation bit. He's got a layer tech coming in. So this build is very, very, very safe against Command Center first. Coming in here, probably a bad idea because guess what? You're not actually as far as as you probably think you are. Um, you know, this... It's a good build. And yeah, my supply is massively ahead right now. And I'll you know say that's a big thumbs up for me. But... Um, infestors and banelings are the sort of unit where, like... If you use them right... They can change that supply differential pretty heavily. And, yeah, that's really all i got to say to this particular build. Um, best of luck, good hunting, have fun.